Shohei Otani going to the Dodgers record-breaking contract and here's the Sports Illustrated baseball preview traditionally the big thing money can wait winning can't deferred money uh, but not deferred performance Tom Verducci spoke at length with Shohei Otani we welcome him in now Tom good to see you thank you for joining us thanks for having me it's still one of the great pieces of real estate in the sports world Brian the cover of SI and who better than Shohei and this was really the first and only sit down interview that he has done since he signed that contract with the Dodgers. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm just wondering, like in the past, who was on that cover of the, the preview? Uh, you know, like you can, they're collectibles in Cooperstown. Harmon Killebrew, Hank Aaron, maybe a Yogi Berra. I'm sure there's, they're all out there. So tell us about this then. What, what new things did you hear from Shohei? Again, he's pretty reclusive. He can get married and nobody even knows it until he announces <laughs> it. So what, what did you hear him say? What, what, what struck you? Well, the overriding factor for me was, listen, I've been around Cal Ripken a lot, and he was always the most intentional player I've ever been around. Everything that he does is purposeful. Shohei even goes beyond Cal Ripken level. Um, so I was getting into a lot of things of how the process works for Shohei. We talked about when he donated gloves to every elementary school in Japan. That's just crazy. I said, where did that idea come from? He said, listen, I signed a big deal with New Balance, an endorsement deal with the shoe company, and I wanted to give back to the fans. And those kids remind me of what I was at that age, and I wanted them all to have a glove to start the game of baseball as basic as it gets is playing catch. He also told me a great story, which I think sort of informs who he is today. When he was about nine years old, his dad was coaching him in the Japanese equivalent of Little League through 9, 10, 11, 12. And his dad bought a notebook, and his dad would write in the notebook some observations about a game or a training uh, regimen that day with Shohei, what he saw, what he liked, what he didn't like. And then he'd give the notebook to Shohei, and then Shohei would put his own thoughts in that notebook, and it would go back and forth. This went on for three or four years, the father and son essentially having a game of literary catch with this notebook. And again, that's where I think you see Shohei now is so specific about everything he does. I asked him what he loves best about baseball. And he said, it's a great question, but it's not really specific about baseball. I love the process of setting a goal and then going to achieve it. Even if it's, you know, a weight I need to lift. Or when he was in Little League, he wanted to go to the national championship. He wrote that inside his hat. He's extremely goal-oriented. And the last thing, Brian, is the thing that really struck me is his humility. It should not be a surprise to anybody. We're so used to this day and age of athletes in America here. You know, I want the most money. I want the most respect. With Shohei, it's all a little bit different here. The idea of deferring 68 of $70 million per year was his idea. And it truly was, I want the Dodgers to be able to have a team around me to spend the money on other players. We're all thinking it must be a Trojan horse and some work around the CBT. <laughs> right, it's right. something the agent came up with. No, it was Shohei literally saying, I don't need all this. I'd rather have the team able to spend on other players. One of the most really unselfish acts. It's a unique contract for, of course, a very unique player. Uh, there's so much there. I know, uh, Tom, when he got married, like when he announced that he had gotten married, I was like, how, did, how is this under the radar in this day and age, right, where everything is supposed to be out there and social media knows everything, and yet it, this is kind of DiMaggio-esque, isn't it, that it's like, no, 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 it, actually, <laughs> I do this on my own time. I don't have to announce it until I'm ready. H how is that possible? Tell me about, like, his... Does he think about his global image, or is he just very private and he lets it happen? A little bit of both. He's certainly aware of his image. I mean, when they had the press conference to introduce him as a Dodger, more people streamed that press conference than watched any World Series game in the history of the World Series. I mean, it was crazy the amount of people that follow him either online or any, on any platform. He is aware of that, but it's interesting. We were talking about his dog, right? It's probably the most famous dog <laughs> the on the dog. planet yeah. these days, decoy. <laughs> And he said, you know what? And he said this to me. He said, I cannot live freely outside. So I spend a lot of time inside. And he specifically said the second Tommy John procedure, it actually wasn't a Tommy John. It was more of a brace procedure. But the second elbow surgery, he said, the rehab went a lot faster because he had his dog decoy with him, just that companionship. And then later on, we find out he's married as well. <laughs> but he said, he literally said, I cannot live freely outside. Oh. Anywhere he goes, it's the Beatles, it's Michael Jordan, it's LeBron, you name it. So, wait, a, a glove for every elementary school kid in Japan. The, it's 125 million people in the country. Like, I don't know, they're not, <laughs> they're not all elementary school age. But how, did he really do that? 
it's not every kid literally, but every school got three gloves, two oh, right-handed okay. gloves, right. one left-handed glove. So 20,000 elementary schools, so 60,000 gloves. And it, I was watching a video with him. It's the first time he saw this video of these kids with this glove, when they broke it out of the box, it's like they got their hands on the Holy Grail. Mm. It meant so much to these kids knowing that it was Shohei and specifically he wanted the kids to enjoy this part of his success. That's a tremendous gesture. I, Tom, before we let you go, I want you to get your, your input on, on Blake Snell. Like, why late March for a Cy Young Award winner with the whole dynamic? Give, me to, give it to us. I'm shocked his market really didn't develop the way that it should have. Brian, this guy's 31 years old. He's been very durable. He gets on the market off a platform season in which he won the second Cy Young Award. Everything is in his favor, and yet he couldn't get that seven, eight-year deal. He couldn't get Carlos Radon money a year later. I don't understand it. This guy is a dominating pitcher. As one manager told me, when Blake Snell is in the rotation one, two, three series ahead of you, you begin planning your lineup because that guy is a dude. He's not just another guy. And I know people say he walks too many guys. You know, he doesn't go deep in the games. He was fifth in the major leagues in quality starts last year. He threw the most Well, Tom, games it's not last year. Pitches. Tom, let me just jump in because we're running out of time. Like, last year, no, he's gold. But it's the previous years and the, the erratic nature of his performance year by year, right? No. seven Last seven years, top five ERA of starting pitchers. You've got Kershaw, Verlander, Scherzer, Cole, Snell. Top five, more than 150 starts with really no serious arm injury. One of the most difficult pitchers to hit. The Giants got themselves the bargain of the offseason. I'm convinced of that. Okay. By the way, he's their highest paid player. You know, salary. Like, he, he didn't Short get killed. Term. He's their highest, <laughs> highest paid salary. Good job. Sports Illustrated Baseball preview. It's always a can't miss. And it continues that way because of Tom Verducci. Tom, great work. Thank you so much.